All right, we're back at J&B again to talk about Tackle on Tackle Tuesdays. And today we're gonna to talk about the different outfits you can use for striped bass. I don't think we're gonna be able to cover everything, but we're gonna we're gonna do a couple different options. And we're gonna start with wire line. Wire line is a very effective way to fish, especially in our local area around here, Eastern Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island waters. It's not the most enjoyable. A lot of guys will argue that they don't like fishing wire or it's not that much fun. Um, one of the reasons that it's so productive is because it's very uniform to fish for the, the fish. With wire, you get out every 100 feet of wire you let out, it goes down 10 feet, which creates a nice angle on the lure so that you can get a good presentation. It also puts most of the catching ability in the boat its hands, so it's the um, boat angler or the boat captain that is going to be catching most of the fish rather than the guy with the rod in his hand. You have to put that lure in the right spot with the boat. And so it's a nice way to fish with friends, family, or just to be very productive because it's a great presentation. And the tackle that you need for that, the wire is very abusive on the gear on the guides of the rod. You need to have special guides on the rod and on the reels. Generally, you want a lower retrieve rate reel, so you don't want one of the newer high-speed reels. So that leaves us with mostly pen as far as the reels that in the market that are gonna qualify. The first combo that we have set up here is a Tsunami wireline rod with a pen 113H. And this is the special series with the stainless spool because when you get wire line on an aluminum spool, you're gonna end up with corrosion. So guys recommend that you go with a stainless spool. The stainless spool is not a necessity. We sell a lot of packages with an aluminum spool. If you take care of it, and if you're really concerned, you can always remove the, um, the wire during the winter. So if you take the wire and the backing off the spool during the winter, you will reduce that galvanic um, corrosion that's going to happen from that electrolysis between the wi stainless wire and the aluminum spool. And that 113, I mean, that thing is tried and true. That's been out since I was a kid. Yeah, it's a great reel. You can still find them used. Oh, I have a few of them, yeah. So, like, if you're looking to get into wire and you want to keep the price down, you can grab used 113s at a great price. You have a great used tackle sale here. Yeah, so we do a lot with used tackle in the off season, and we do sell a lot of those reels. I mean, for between 40 and $60, you can grab a 113, and a lot of times, these are the non-US made reels that you're buying now. You can find an older US made reel that's equally as good. Getting back to the overall combo, you wanna get something that has carbide guides like this, or a high-tech guide like a silicon carbide something like that but ultimately the carbide is the best and you're going to notice that the price tag on a wire line rod goes up pretty significantly even though the rod doesn't look that special and it's because the cost of the guides um, the other things that are important on wire line rods like i said the wire is abusive you've got a lot of weight on this reel and the way you're going to crank on it it tends to want to walk back and forth and create a lot of strain on the reel seat, on the gimbal, all those things are gonna be stress points. So for wireline, we highly recommend at least an aluminum reel seat where you can crank down on the, the reel clamp pretty good. And either an aluminum butt or a slick butt works great if you're gonna be doing any rod holder fishing because then it comes in and out of the rod holder easier. And a good aluminum gimbal. The other option we set up was a JMV custom rod. And unfortunately, because there's not a lot made for wire line stuff, you have to go custom to get what you're looking for. The generic wire line rods that are on the market don't tend to have quite the same action to work a bucktail or something specific. They're great for umbrella rigs. They're gonna be good for spoons. But if you wanna to get to a specific bunker spoon rod, then you might wanna look into that too. And we'll cover that in a minute. But basically when you go from the generic to a custom or a more elaborate rod, you're looking for a more specific action to work the lure better. It's not that the components that get that much better. And this is exclusively trolled. This is exclusively trolling with wireline. You know, there's so many- the typical speeds that you troll at? You're gonna be about two and a half to three knots. Um, it's more about lure presentation. So depending on the different lures, and it's very tide dependent. In all these videos that we've done, 
one thing that's going to be a common thread is going to be presentation. You know, and I may not mention it in every single one that we do, but basically, however we want to present the lure, that's going to be the most important thing with everything else we do. It involves tide conditions, weather conditions, and then picking the right tackle is to get that lure to present as natural as possible. In this case, we're choosing wire line because trolling with wire line for striped bass is a great way to present a lure. If you want to step the combo up again, we've got a squall um, on here. This would be a squall 50 is what you want, and it's a lever drag reel which steps it up a little bit. The only drawback is that you can't get these reels with a stainless spool. So you have to go to the aluminum, which requires a little bit more care. The real short point is that th there are options that you can do to the spool to protect it, but they're more involved, so it'd be something you'd wanna give the shop a call and we can go over them with you. But this is what we're using on the charter boats now, is this lever drag reel, because it really stands up well and it's a little bit nicer than fishing with the Trident True 113. If you notice the difference between the custom rod and the um, Tsunami is the number of guides and the guide placement. This is a faster taper rod and it's gonna have a lighter tip to really snap the bucktail. So we had to put a couple more guides up near the tip section. And those are some of the you know, little nuances of the rod that are gonna make a difference. So Kyle mentioned when you're trolling, you're either dead sticking it in a rod holder or you're actually jigging it? Right, so if you're fishing an umbrella rig or a bunker spoon, you're gonna be fishing it in a rod holder or holding it off to the side of the boat. Um, same thing with like a trolling plug, but if you're fishing a parachute rig or a bucktail, that's gonna be where the rod's gonna come into play the most because you wanna get the right rhythm to move that parachute. Um, I actually just built a set of custom rods for a customer and the reason we had to rebuild them is this rod wasn't working for them because the anglers that they had moving the rod, they didn't jig it fast enough. They wanted to row the boat. They wanted to be slow like this. So they actually had to have a more parabolic, stiffer tipped rod to move the parachute the same amount, where these rods are designed for a quick snapping action. So either hold the rod down and snap like this very fast, or hold it vertical like in a chair or something and snap it quickly like that. But you wanna get that like slack in the wire so then it falls back when you're jigging, and that's important. And the, the outfit helps you do that. A question we get a lot is roller tips or no roller tip. The ring guide is what we recommend here at the shop but it's mostly because it allows the swivel to go through and it gives you 360 degrees of protection on the tip. The roller tips reduce the friction and are more fun to reel the fish in, but they require a little bit more care because when the swivel goes through it, you either have to drop down to like a small spro swivel or hand feed the wire out a little bit more. So there's some reasons to stay with that you know, ring tip. But if you're having grooving issues on the tip or you want to reduce the friction a little bit, the roller is a good option. Don't want to get too off topic on it, but I just wanted to mention if you are going to fish bunker spoons or some of the big, you know, trolling plugs, things like that, the bunker spoon rod is a great option. So there's a few different manufacturers that make it. Tsunami makes enough one to complement theirs. And this is an eight foot rod and it has a specific action designed to be a little bit more parabolic and get the right rhythm when you're fishing a spoon. Because again, it's about presentation. And if that spoon's fishing the right way, you're gonna catch more fish. It also allows you to spread the wire out on the boat. So if you're fishing a smaller center console with a narrow beam, you're gonna be able to put two of these rods out to the side and it gives you greater spread. This particular rod breaks here at the butt. So now storage wise, you're not trying to store an eight foot rod. And that works out very well. A um, couple other manufacturers, Tony Maha makes a rod like this. We make a custom version, but ours doesn't break, so it becomes the eight-foot rod. Just like in all of our videos on gear, the more specific you get, there's gonna be rods and reels to complement that, but then they don't work for other things. So it's just how involved you wanna become. What are the specs on the wire? What pound test typically around here? We're using an 025 wire most of the time, which is about a 50 to 60 pound test wire. And again, we're marking it every 100 feet. We put in swivels at the beginning and end of the wire and about a 30 foot leader. And that leader can go anywhere from 50 pound test to 80 pound test, depending on what we're doing. Mono leader, yep. Every once in a while, we'll fish a short fluorocarbon leader off of that. You know, if you want something specifically to the lure, you know, to give yourself a little bit of an added edge, but generally just a mono leader. 
And you're fishing mostly rips and structure? It's, it's, it's all going to be rips, currents, depending, again, very area specific. So eastern part of Connecticut, we have a lot of tide and we have a lot of rocky bottom and we're fishing right on the edge of um, rips and shoals and stuff like that. If you get north of here very far, you can get into some good sandy bottom where you can fish pretty much you know, on a rip line, but you don't have to be as specific about how you're trolling. There's a lot to trolling, like how to maneuver the boat with this gear. Um, and that's something anytime anyone wants to ask questions regarding, you know, they saw the gear on here and we want to talk about more, more questions, you can leave a comment and we can always get back to you. Because again, this is stuff that we do regularly on our charter boat. And what's the ballpark cost for those combos? 350. For the generic one, you're with the custom, with a squall like that, you're about 400, you know, because you, you've got 200 plus in the rod alone. You've got an aluminum butt, all the carbide guides. So that's where, like I said, the, the cost adds up even though it doesn't look that specific. Thanks again for watching this week's episode on fishing for striped bass with Wireline. And next week we'll be covering some more of the different striped bass outfits. So stop by the shop or come visit us and get more information. Thanks. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please support the channel and subscribe. Until next time, enjoy your adventures.